Let's, let's look at it together. First John 3.16. And let's see what the word of God tells us there. First John 3.16. And it reads, do we have it? Amen? Amen. Amen. First John 3.16 says this. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Verse 17 says, But whosoever hath this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Oh, that's what the word says. And you know, Apostle Paul says it something like this. He says, Our works as God's servants get validated when we give during hard times. When we give during tough times, when we give during bad times, when we give when we're beaten in jail, when we've been mobbed, and we're working late, we're not feeling well, when we have very little to eat. I'm talking about this is what God's servants are actually supposed to be doing. Yeah. And Apostle Paul, that comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, 6, verses 4 through 10. And he said, whatever it costs to enrich the lives of others on behalf of Christ, Paul considered it to be worthwhile. You see, for our church at this point, I truly believe that we give a lot. You're working for now two and a half years in this thing, and it seems like you're giving, and you say, we don't have anything else to give. We show up, we work, we, we try to cultivate, we plant, we water, but we said, you know, sometimes it's like we can't give anything else. But God has said, look, be encouraged, and I thank God for the testimony of Reverend Alex. We have to be encouraged to keep pressing in spite of. Mm -hmm. You see, because others have before us, they had to give up something. They had to make sacrifices mm -hmm. for us to be in the position yeah. we are here yeah. today. Yeah. And so, so many times I think back about my mom and I said, there was no way on earth that I could have gone through school, gone through grad school, been in a position to do the things that the Lord has allowed me to accomplish if it wasn't for my mom. My mom had to give up some things. She had to sacrifice. I mean, she was educated as a teacher, but my mom, she had to work in some venues that she did not necessarily want to just so that I could have what I needed. She didn't mind scrubbing a floor. She didn't mind making the sacrifice. So I said, I dare not complain about the sacrifices that I have to make for my children because somebody before me made those sacrifices. Something that just gets, you know, they say something that just gets my goat <laughs> is when you have people that have now gotten into a position of power and authority. They're your CEOs. Those are the people that are in the political realm. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that have really seemingly, they have moved up the realm, so yeah. to speak. They're, you know, they have uh, actually achieved that ladder of success. And they have the nerve to say, I made it all by myself. Mm -hmm. No one helped me to get this. And that's yeah. I deserve this thing. But I tell you, and make no mistake, that somebody made a sacrifice. Yeah. And there was somebody there at one point that probably struck floors for them, and they just don't know. There was somebody I know for us, and depending on your heritage, there was somebody out in the field chopping some cotton. There was somebody in the tobacco field. Yeah. There was somebody getting whipped. Well, but there was somebody at the same time, those same people was praying, God, free the one day. Some yeah. of the people made sacrifices. It was somebody that said, look, I refuse to ride this bus so that we'll all ride around in our Mercedes and our Lexus today. Somebody had to make that sacrifice. Amen. There were people assassinated so that we could have yeah. what we have today. So I dare not say that I ride by myself. It was just on my own because of me. I pulled myself up. No. Just like you have that picture when you they said reach beyond the break of the rope. There's another hand yes. that's reaching out for you. So Thank you didn't make it by yourself. Sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And sacrifice. Amen. I said Likewise, for Christianity, sometimes we act like, oh, I've just been saved all my life. <laughs> I've made no mistakes. Yeah. I am now in this particular position. I am now Reverend so-and-so. I'm now Deacon so-and-so and trustee so-and-so. And I have things. I pay the most money in the church and this, that, and the other. But guess what? We can act if we want like we have arrived in our status as Christians. But God is frowning on that thing because he says in all of our righteousnesses as what to Filthy him? Red. Filthy rags. So we best not forget it's Jesus' righteousness is not our own. Thank and you. when you actually think about Christ-like sacrifices, mm -hmm. you need to have three things there available. Your Christ-like sacrifice should want that one thing be is voluntary. You should be able to, if the word tells us and let us know, that Jesus did not just let them take his life. 
Yeah. But he voluntarily yeah. gave up his life. Yeah. And he's not asking us to die on the cross again or go die for anybody or to, you know, jump off the building to prove that he can sweep you up and take prevent you from hitting the ground. He's not asking you to die in that manner. But he is asking us today to die to our own selfish actions. Man. He's Man. asking us to think about somebody else and not just ourselves. Well. And another thing, and we talk about sacrificing, it is costly. It costs you something. I remember Reverend Harris talking about how David, when he wanted to make a sacrifice, the land. He said, I dare not take this land for free, although it was offered for free to make God yep, sacrifice. Yep. He wanted to pay something. It's costly when you're talking about, I'm going to fast for this thing. When you're going to have to deny yourself, that's something costly. It's costly. A lot of us pass many churches. We've been to many services on one day, but it's costing you something to deny that sleep. You could be home in your bed trying to get that second wind to get ready for work in the morning or do whatever with your family, but it's costing you something. You're making the sacrifice to come out. And that's why we tell you all thank you each day and every time you come in here because it is costing you something to get here. And you don't have to do this thing. Right. The other thing is it's steady. A mm. sacrifice is something that should be steady. Well, Meaning we are to pour out ourselves doing for others what they cannot do for themselves. Mm. And it's not for show or recognition. Well, Sometimes people do things and they do it just for show and for recognition. Well, what are you going to do? It's like, okay, if when somebody says, well, who can make a contribution of $1,000 today? I remember I was in a church at one point. I know you all haven't experienced this. But what they would do is call up and say, well, you know, the $1,000 givers, come on up. So yeah. come up and give me your own crap. $100 of yeah, uh, uh, donor givers, come on up. People would walk up. Well, man, I didn't have a maybe $5 in my pocket, so I wasn't going to give up. Give up. That's not what he's talking about. Right. He's talking about doing and giving consistently. Right. Right. And see, we think giving always in a monetary way. Yeah. But what about giving and sacrifice? Is it going to hurt you anything as a Christian to give somebody a smile? No. Is it going to hurt you to give somebody a hug? No. Is it going to hurt you to give an encouraging word? Oh. Is it going to hurt you to give that compliment that person needs every now and then? Yeah. Is it going to hurt you to give a share? You know, you go to the grocery store, buy one, get one free. Is it all right sometimes that you can sit down or go back home and drop by that, that free one to somebody else? It's not going to, it doesn't have to be in that monetary sense. Mm -hmm. We have so much people to give. Mm -hmm. And if we don't see it that way, the enemy deceives us. But what I want to tell you, there are some ways that we can give sacrificially each day. Mm -hmm. We know we can give our time to care for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Sister Mabel asked, she said, where is ma'am today? I've missed it for the last couple of Sundays. You know, you got to sacrifice sometime. you got to go out. When, when Sister Cheryl said, I needed a ride, Brother Alice and Sister Mandy said, let me, you know, it's not like right around the corner. I don't know, Alice, you all, you all are some good drivers. You got there, you said, in 15 to 20 minutes. When I did the map quest, it was farther than that. Reverend Goss has done the same thing, and I know that it's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The balance is everybody sacrificed to help each other. But it's saying, give your time to care for those mm -hmm. that, right, that are right around you. Sometimes we'll go and say, I'm going to give to the foreign mission. I'm going to give to Uganda. I'm going to give to wherever. But then there are people right next door mm -hmm. in our nice neighborhood mm -hmm. that we don't mm -hmm. even speak to. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And the old folks would say good morning belongs to a dog. That was very right. nice. But they live right next door. Right. And we don't say hello. Yes, yes, and so it's saying talking about caring about those that are right there. In your own household, you wake up with a person. Oh, my goodness, my husband asked me, oh, what are we cooking for breakfast today? Do you have any food? I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> now I'm getting ready to go to church. And you come asking me to fix food. I had to preach in Elgin today. But I had to think about it. I did fix something. It wasn't a lot, but it was something. I did fix something. <laughs> Take about, think, you know, taking care of those in your own household. And it says, you know, give your reputation by standing up for Jesus. Yeah. You know, when it gets, sometimes it's hard to stand up for Jesus when everybody else is saying everything all around you, but only 